The Lions. I was wondering, a little bit earlier today, you know who's been quiet? Those Detroit Lions. Where are they at? They have cap space. They let Jonah Jackson walk to the LA Rams, a big guard, big time baller for them the last few years, young in the prime of his career. They obviously need a cornerback. They obviously could use a pass rusher. And then what do the Detroit Lions do? They line them up and they knock them down. Carlton Davis has been traded. The Tampa Bay Buccaneer cornerback, one of the BLV favorites of the past few seasons, has been traded to the Detroit Lions. The Lions are trading the second of their third round picks for Carlton Davis plus a 2024 sixth round pick and a 2025 sixth round pick that is in exchange along with Carlton Davis. So it's a third round pick for Carlton Davis and two sixth round selections in 2024 and 2025. So essentially the value is about a fourth rounder for Carlton Davis this year. He is in the last year of his contract, which hurts his value, obviously. He's making $14.5 million, which is pretty, pretty sustainable, pretty decent for a player such as Carlton Davis. He is a Super Bowl champion back in 2020-2021. Uh, with Tom Brady and the Buccaneers playing in Todd Bowles' defense for his entire career. Carlton Davis is one of my favorites, and the reason why is his play style. I really like how he plays, always have. He is a physical, aggressive, in-your-face cornerback who can really thrive in man-to-man -man coverage settings. Although in Tampa Bay, he's played a lot of zone coverage as well because of you know the zone coverage hybrid type of looks that Todd Bowles' defense come with where, you know, they'll they'll send people from everywhere. They'll drop people out from every direction. They'll have Vita Vea dropping from nose tackle to middle linebacker, things like that. So they play a lot of zone blitz concepts. They play some man coverage. They sprinkle in quarters coverage, zone coverage looks. But Carlton Davis has really been particularly good at the line of scrimmage in press coverage. Whenever he can get his hands on a wide receiver, that is when he's most effective. So whether that's in man press coverage or zone press coverage, he is really good at playing against physical receivers. His best games I've ever seen him play were against Michael Thomas, where he was able to manhandle him at the line of scrimmage in the playoffs, where he was able to play against Jamar Chase, a big physical receiver. He tends to have issues against smaller, quicker receivers, but, you know, like a Cooper Cup, for example. But when he's able to face an outside perimeter receiver with good size, he's able to lock that player down pretty effectively, even the best in football. So he is a little bit of a matchup guy. You can definitely use him as your number one corner and put him wherever you want on either side of the field and have him travel with certain receivers if you so wish. But he's certainly a massive upgrade for Detroit who needed a massive addition to their secondary. And I think they got a very, very good player. I wouldn't call Carlton Davis an elite corner, but I've ranked him in my top 20 corners in the NFL for the past three years in a row. So that kind of gives you a, a good sign of, of, of kind of what he is. So he's, he's a number one corner. He's, he's better than what you got last year in free agency to be your number one corner. He is 27 right now, and he's going to be 28 in late December, actually on New Year's Eve, which is funny. Last year, he had two picks in 12 games. He does tend to miss a few games every year. He's never actually started a full season. He's played at most 14 games in a year. He's played at the least 10 games in a year, which was 2021. But when he's on the field, he's a good player and a good coverage player. And he can play in man or zone coverage. But I do like his skills specifically in man press coverage. I always have the most in that regard. So Carlton Davis, very good winner, proven winner. Been there, done that. Physical, still near the prime of his career. Not too old. He's not 30 yet. He's 27, 28. And he's a good fit for Detroit. I think he's a very good fit for Detroit. Once I saw the trade, I was like, that makes a lot of sense. That's kind of what they want their corners to be, right? They don't fear 
receivers running past them. They're about getting in the receiver's face. They're about disrupting their rhythm at the line of scrimmage. They're they're about having versatility in man and zone coverage. They're about blitzing just like the Bucks are. So it does make sense in a lot of different ways. And Aaron Glenn, I believe, was formerly with the Saints. So he probably saw a little bit of Carlton Davis when he was with the Saints, having played him twice a year in the division. So... There's a lot that makes sense in terms of this trade. So I really like this trade for the Lions. I think in terms of the Bucs, it's pretty fair compensation about a, thir- a third round pick for Carlton Davis. You get some money this year, $14 million to spend on the rest of your roster. It's pretty fair. I would say this is a good trade for both sides overall. We'll see what the Bucs are able to do with that draft pick, but they're able to replenish some of their roster elsewhere, potentially maybe work on the... Uh, front seven, the edge rushers, or potentially safety, maybe even going younger at corner, saving some money, maybe going a little bit cheaper at corner, maybe using it on offensive line. There's a lot of different areas the Bucks could potentially upgrade, but it's a good move for the Lions. The other move that the Lions made today, they added a pass rusher, former first round pick of the New Orleans Saints. We thought that the the Lions might go after a New Orleans Saint given the background of the coaching staff that they have. Marcus Davenport signed a one-year deal this year with the Lions. He played a little bit with the Vikings last year. He ended up getting injured, which has been an issue for Davenport. He's gotten hurt a lot. So these two moves do have a little bit in common in terms of these two guys While Carlton Davis has been able to finish every season and play every season without missing a long-term season, Marcus Davenport also has been banged up a lot and injured a lot throughout his young career. But former first-round pick of the Saints, he signed a one-year $10.5 million on its max $6.5 million base salary. Davenport has always had a ton of upside, and at times he's looked like a really good player. So this isn't just a case of a former first round pick that has upside but has never really flashed anything. There's actually been times where Davenport has proven to be a really good player, specifically 2021. At 25 years old, he had nine sacks in nine starts, 11 games in total. He had four and a half and six sacks in his first two seasons in the NFL in 2018 and 2019. But otherwise, you know, he has dealt with a lot of injuries and he has not consistently had sack production. But what I think of him is I think of he's a player that the front office knows, that the coaching staff knows, that perhaps they understand how to coach him up, how to get the best out of him in Detroit. He fits the mold of the type of edge rushers that the Lions look for in terms of big, physical, fast freaks. They're not exactly bendy players but they're better in terms of their power usage and their ability to use their hands to go from speed to power and push back linemen into the face of the quarterback, right? When you think of Aiden Hutchinson, you don't think of Vaughn Miller, right? You you think of a guy that is really good at using his hands to get inside or out and be able to beat the tackle or be able to rush with speed to power to transition to push the, the linemen back. It's similar with Marcus Davenport. He's been, he's good against the run. He's gritty in that facet, but he's got to stay healthy. I think he could use a little bit of coaching, but he's a good fit for the Lions' defensive scheme given that he's played a majority of his career in New Orleans and been pretty good in New Orleans and was signed to, I think, a better contract than this uh, last year by the Vikings. So perhaps a bit of value here, a value signing for for the Lions. It's not going to kill them in any way, shape, or form if it doesn't work out. Again, former first-round pick Marcus Davenport signs with the Lions, 27 years of age, turning 28 on my birthday. He has the same birthday as me. Whoa, that's awesome. I didn't even know that. Sick. September 4th, 1996. Shout out to Marcus Davenport. Gronk spike the like button, baby.